Laura and Dago, um, we are kind of related, even though we didn't even know this. Um, Yay, but all I, I can see. say is where yet. Oh, come on. Are you from Louisiana? I am not. I am married to a Cajun from Metairie. Metri. Oh my gosh, I know that. And so that I've been amazing. schooled in everything in New Orleans. We've been together over 20 years. Wow. Um, I will not bite a tail or suck a head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But I'm it. wondering if you do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every time crawfish season rolls around, I'm like, sign me up. I will do like crawfish eating tutorials. The other day we got a bunch of seafood. My friend, um, she's actually from Chicago, but she loves seafood. Yeah. And we had like a boil at my house. Yes. And we had like Alaskan king crab and shrimp and potatoes and the whole thing, right? Yeah. And they're like, okay, so we got all this seafood, but we don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and I was like, and you're like, okay, let me get you, girl. And so I was like teaching them how to, they're like, how do you do this so fast? Like, this is too much work for, for so little. I'm like, no. It, it's the flavor. Like, yeah. just wait till you taste it. It's, it's part so of the experience mm -hmm. to getting that little teeny piece of yeah. meat out of that thing. Yep. And you have so much conversation. Yeah. Like, I think it's really more of a conversation. Like, mm -hmm. when you're just sitting there cracking this little thing over and over again, you're going to be there for a hot, like, hour, two hours. <laughs> it's not going to be a slow meal. That's do you sure. do it on newspaper? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and that's not... the thing where they dump it all yes. out on the yes. paper. Yes, yes. Yeah. You spread when... it out and you just go for it. Go for it. Yeah. When I was a little kid, like... We would do that every weekend. And so you just spread newspaper everywhere. You wrap it, the tables. And then the trucks would come by and they would just have like like trash can fulls of, mm -hmm. of crawfish and stuff like that. And now it's like, I think because... The outside world picked up on it. Yeah. It's like a really, it's like expensive. It's like a delicacy mm -hmm. now. Yeah, it's, right. The outside yeah. world like picked up on it. <laughs> yeah, my husband Roy even uh, he's so deep into it. He even would shuck oysters at Acme. That was a summer yeah. job. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're like this is true. This, this is, is like deep, deep, deep Louisiana. Yes. You know Acme. If you know Acme, yeah. that's like local. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So wow. he would take me everywhere, and then I, I fell in love with it so much. We we go there several times a year. Wow. And then his uh, his relatives are all in Bogalusa. Yep. Uh, yeah. So That's when amazing. when I saw that you're from Lafayette, and I'm from Lafayette, Indiana. Oh, so Lafayette, wow. Louisiana. My, I'm married to a tiger. So I'm like, oh, my God. I, I love her already. That's amazing. <laughs> the, yesterday, I, I had uh, purple leggings on, a purple sweatshirt on. And the only shirt I had, like, underneath was yellow. Oh, and no. I was like, I think this is an issue. <laughs> like... <laughs> I think this there's a problem. Purple and gold is the only thing that's on my brain all the time. Are you one who never misses Mardi Gras, or is music taking you kind of other places now? Well, mm. I I don't miss Mardi Gras. Yeah, yeah, I don't miss it. Right. I, and like festivals, like Jazz Fest, we're actually playing Jazz Fest this year. So I was like, okay, good. I won't yeah. have to even worry about missing yeah, that one. Perfect. Like, there's that. And then we have a festival, Festival International, back home. So I like I just block off in the schedule. Like these are the three days that. Of the year, I won't be able to make a show. Yeah. Like, if there's a show in the books, we might want to take it off. <laughs> I love it, though. I just love the culture. It's so rich. You have to be like, uh, you got to do the, what is it when you're the head of the parade? Uh, like the oh, Indian. the queen? Yeah. yeah. You need to be the, the master of oh ceremonies. Oh, my gosh. That would be amazing. Yeah, we can I, all come down and have a party. And Demian is so fun, too. Yeah. That specific one. I love it. Yeah. I love it. We went this year. Rod Stewart was the yes. guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he'd never, like, ever even, like, He'd been in New Orleans, but never experienced that. Wow. So wow. we told him, we said, like so many others, you might have to get tied mm -hmm. to the float because you drink so much, you, you fall literally off. fall down. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I remember, this is this is taking a turn for the worse, but I remember <laughs> whenever I was a kid, like hearing about people dying because they'd fall off floats. And you're yeah. like, what? <laughs> like as a kid, you're like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Like, because the floats are like 10, 15 feet high, yeah, like yeah, off yeah. the ground. You get a little crazy. You get a little crazy. Uh, yeah. uh, you never know what you're going to get. Well, let's get to anyway. music. Yeah. Uh, we love the song you say, and you're nominated for two Grammys. Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, so where were you when you got the news? We always like to know, like, where Ooh. were you when you got that call? I was sleeping on the bus, and my manager, she ended up, she, like, woke everybody up early and was like, um, everybody get in the front lounge, get in the front lounge. She ordered over 80 balloons, and they're, like, Grammy colors, like, black and gold, uh, and filled up the entire mm. front lounge. Like, you couldn't see anything. It was just, like, solid balloons. Oh so she was like, okay, Lauren, it's time to wake up. And I was like, 
wait, my alarm hasn't gone off. Like, what's happening? I was like, why are we getting up so early? I was like, no, because I'm an artist, so I don't wake up till like one. If you wake me up at 11, I'm like, thanks for coming here in the morning. Oh, yeah. no, no, it's so fine. We're on West Coast time, so we're good. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I, I'm so exhausted, but we'll make it. It's fine. And I had like a few events I had to do that day. Mm. I was like, golly, I'm way more tired than I thought I would be at this point. Get up. And I open the, the front lounge like door, it slides open, and everybody's like, surprise. And I was like, oh it's God. not 11 o'clock yet. <laughs> she was like, no, it's a surprise for the Grammys. I was like, what? She was like, you're nominated. So I found out like that. It was like a fun little front lounge party that oh we all had. God. It was sweet. That's and then we so kept cool. the balloons in there for like two days. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. And let it soak in. It probably still is sinking oh, in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. like it's always for me the day after. Once it's all over mm. is when I'm like, oh my gosh, that just happened. How in the world? Right. What just ha what just happened? How is everybody here? Like you know what yeah, I mean? Right. Like, just kind of soak it, soak it all in. You hear stories of artists who literally have to go away from all people mm -hmm. to wrap their head around how far mm -hmm. they've come. We've mm -hmm. heard that story so many times yeah. about how because you're you have your schedule, you're moving mm -hmm. so fast, you're doing promo, you're you know, you're, you're adorable. Everyone wants to talk uh -huh. to you. And then it's like, well, wait, I never have time to like think about my life. Yep. Yep. I try. This is kind of like my personal goal because we talk about it all the time. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So how do we mm. think in terms of right now for the, the future? Yeah. So I'll have a tour and at the end of a tour, take a month off. Mm -hmm. And so like if we're gone for three months, then I'll get like a month to just process yeah. everything. Like really think about it, go back home, get back in touch with like simple life. Yes. And then from there, move on to the next thing. Just so that you have time. Like we did a show at Carnegie and I was like, okay, the three days after Carnegie, like, like uh, oh. I just want to stay in New York yeah. and soak it up because this is crazy. Like, Carnegie's magical. Oh my goodness. Have you ever seen a show in there? I have. And it's, it's magical. Fun. It's it's. Real. You can almost feel the walls and the history talk. Yes. It's great. Yes. I went, this is hysterical, but I never see the front. Like, because oh, I've right. seen you're always twice going and we're always loaded. Yes. Yeah, that little back yes. door entrance kind of thing. So the day after, everybody had flown out and I had stayed back for a few days and I was like, I'm going to go to Carnegie. And I just went and knocked on the front lobby uh, door and I said, Excuse me, sir. He said, Yeah. I said, I know this is really random, but I played here last night and I've never seen it. And he was like, what? I was like, I've actually, I've just like never actually seen the hall other than stage and backstage. He was like, are you serious? I was like, please. I was like, could you just show me around? I know that sounds really bad. He was like, I would be delighted. So he like took me all through the levels. I got to like sit in the seats that everyone else sits in. Whoa. I was like, I've got to soak up just this moment. Like not take these things for granted. It's just like. It's so beautiful. That hall is amazing. What a perspective to like learn. Like we get so many artists through here and we've never, no one's ever said that. We've never even thought to ask, but what a great yeah. thing. Yeah. You just never, yeah. I think there's so many times I've heard this. Oh my gosh. Have you seen the lobby of that theater? It's beautiful. Uh -huh. It's so ornate or yeah. the hand carved da, da, da. of all of these different theaters that we right. play around the country. And I was like, no, I've never seen it. No, I've never seen it. <laughs> They're like, but you've played there. I'm like, I know, but you, there's like a vast chasm between the seats mm -hmm. and the stage. And I'm trying, I want to just get that smaller and smaller. Yeah. Like I want to get that gap closer and closer. That's together. really cool. Yeah. Can I make oh. a suggestion? Yeah. Start waking up at 11 and then do it early in the <laughs> I know, I know. I think I said to my manager, I was like, <clears throat> goal of the day. Yeah. She was like, what? I was like, I want to see the lobby of Carnegie. And yeah. then the day happens and you just get swept away with right. everything that's <laughs> happening. I mean, we were in rehearsals for hours and whatever. But that's that's right. Crazy. Instead of waking up at eleven, Lauren, wake up at ten thirty so that you can actually see the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's time management. Yeah, time management. Oh, if there's one New Year's resolution, I don't make New Year's resolutions. Uh -huh. I'm like, why? But if there's one thing I need to get yeah. better at, time management. Time management. <laughs> I don't have that skill. <laughs> Just cram it all into one day. Yes. Um, now we don't know if this is true or not. You said you never want to be a musician until you contracted mono. And oh. that was the best thing to ever happen to you. How did that go down? Yeah. Okay. So when I was 15, it wasn't exactly mono. It's like a branch of it called mm. cytomegalovirus. And I, I got it and was placed on homebound for two years. And so up until that point, I went to this like 
private academic school. So it was like, go to Harvard and be a lawyer or go be a doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was very, all like college prep. Yes, yeah. college preparatory school. And so I'm sitting here like, but I love to sing, but I love to sing. But okay, I'll go be a doctor. Yeah. So I'm thinking medical field. And um, I get this illness when I was 15, went on homebound. And my mom, like to keep me out of depression, honestly, because I, I'm such a social bug. Yeah. So to have to be completely isolated was really hard. Um, and so my mom was like, what do you want to do to just keep you motivated? Because I couldn't really do physical things. Mm-hmm. Um, and sh- I was like, let's sing. And I started singing, taking voice lessons. And that's kind of where it all launched from. Whoa. Yeah, it was it was Amazing. music actually became the cathartic space for Mm -hmm. me, like the, the healing space, just like, I think, um, a lot of times people have associations with songs, you know? Oh yeah. And they're like, wow, that song just completely brought me out of a a time. And so for some reason, even then, like I remember thinking, okay, I want to make words come into melody that give people that space. Mm -hmm. Like what I'm experiencing right now is the same thing I want to deliver to people. So yeah, it was really beautiful. What a, what a gift in a backdoor kind of way. Yeah, Yeah. I know. Sometimes I tell (laughs) kids all the time because they talk to me about that. Like I met a girl the other day. Um, she was in a bad car accident and was debilitated from it and has spent years like trying to get back on her feet. And then, you know, I met another girl, had cancer, another girl. There's so many mm. little girls that like come up to me and say, how do you deal with, you know, these obstacles? And I say, okay, in your mind, this is what I did. I would research all of these people that were going through the worst of times. And like FedEx, the guy who owns FedEx, he had dyslexia and wasn't going to make it in college. It was all these things, right? And then he had this brilliant idea to start a printing company, which is now one of the biggest companies in the world. So I was like, okay, he overcame that. And I studied a lot of artists and Mm -hmm. a lot of actors and just people that had gone through really difficult times. What I found was they didn't let their pain or the thing that would have completely wiped them out um, overcome them. Uh But instead they like use that to launch from they like Uh, put it under their feet and jumped off of it mm. right so i tell these kids all the time like make it the platform in which you leap off of into your destiny or into what you're supposed to be doing take it to elevate yeah yeah that's right right. that's it that's That's amazing don't get focused you you could teach a class at lsu (laughs) yeah (laughs) fellow uh, you know tigers (laughs) (laughs) motivational speech here we go (laughs) well i can't imagine i mean uh, you'd be a great doctor because you have such a good bedside manner. But, oh, you know, imagine if you it's like that movie Sliding Doors, you know, mm. where if you go through this door, this this might not have happened. And so yeah. the illness was a gift. Yeah, it was truly a gift. And and then we we also know you auditioned for American Idol three different times. Um, and now looking at where you are now, was that also a gift in a way that like, OK, say you win. Mm-hmm. It'd be a whole different path. Oh, Completely and, different. And, and probably the wrong path because mm-hmm. here you are, Grammy nominee. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I was on that show the first year, I was like, what is this? This is amazing. Yeah. You meet so many incredible people. And one thing I'll say is the pressure that they put on you throughout the show, it's pretty accurate Like yeah. to how the music industry works. Like, oh, good. There is a lot of demand in the middle of the show that you're like, holy cow, is this yeah. even real or is this just to... Just to like, make people fall apart yeah. with the camera, right? But it's actually pretty accurate. Um, but I did find myself at the end of it saying, I think I'm ready to be off. Like, I think I'm a, I, uh, I like told my mom the day before, I was yeah. like, I don't think I want to do this. Yeah. And then the next day I got cut. I was like, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we made it. I was like, oh good, good. And so I wasn't, it was funny. The first year I was like bummed about it. I was like, wait, I really wanted this to happen. I was 17. I was young. But then by the last time I went, I was kind of like, yeah, no, this just isn't what I want to do. Yeah. And seeing how, you know, those contracts work and things like that, it's pretty binding, but mm-hmm. the experience yeah. is worth so yeah. much. Like yeah. it really is. When you wrote, you say, what were you, what was in your mind? Uh, like what is the, what's behind the song? Yeah, I was complete. I was in a place of living fully in the past, living fully in the future, and being afraid of both. Oh. 
So we I just finished my first award show and I remember thinking what is going on? Like, <laughs> I'm just from Louisiana now. All these cameras are in my face. And, like, taking it out of that context and putting it, you know, just in everyday terms, like, there's so many times where you feel inadequate or where you feel insecure. Mm -hmm. And I think the fear of the unknown was getting so loud um, because I could feel transition. I knew, like, something was happening. Whether it be good or bad, it still changed. Mm -hmm. And how do I like get anchored in the midst of feeling completely inadequate, just feeling unsure of mm -hmm. everything. And there's a lot of things that can cause that, like someone passing away in your family mm -hmm. or um, experiencing a job loss or whatever, yeah. having to move. There's so many things. So I needed to hear words that would be the bridge to get me from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Like, And I told my producers, I was like, I think I'm about to fall apart. Like, I am terrified. Uh -huh. And they're like, oh, wait, you just need to be reminded of who you are. So it's a song all about identity, really, oh, cool. at the basis of it all. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Thank You're you. You're an amazing person. Thank so you we're so, so happy much, to meet Ellen. you. Oh, yeah. This is beautiful. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. Truly yeah, thank special. you. And Louisiana. Uh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. We go. We're sisters <laughs> already, yet. girl. <laughs> for you today. Where yet? Oh, yeah. I noticed. I actually noticed. It's My eyes are trained. I can't help it. <laughs> thank you so uh, much. Thank you. I Thanks. appreciate it. <laughs>